Lords of the Fallen is an upcoming dark fantasy action RPG where you'll explore the worlds of Axiom, the realm of the living, and the Umbral, the realm of the dead. As a Dark Crusader, it's up to you to select one of nine character classes and fight your way through tough enemies to overthrow a deer, the demon god. And right now, I'm going to be playing on this brand new Vizio Quantum Pro, their new flagship 65-inch QLED TV paired with the Vizio M Elevate soundbar. But right now, I think it's time we take a plunge into the Umbral world. All right, so once we select a new game, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and create a character. Uh, just for the sake of getting into the action, I'm gonna go with a Hallowed Knight, who is a stalwart knight whose loyalty to the cleric and the Hallowed Sentinels is matched only by their determination to destroy a deer and the Rogar, a class focused on physical prowess bolstered by radiance. Me, I love a good sword and board, so this one feels like tailor-made to me. Plus, it looked pretty darn cool. Uh, of course, you can also customize your character as you see fit, but once again, just to kind of jump into the action, I am going to just kind of toggle through and continue forward. And of course, we got to name our creation, so let's go ahead and go with IGN. And let's get started. Law, the latest receiver of his grace. Great potential dwells within you, doubtless, for you to be chosen thusly. And so does Aureus' wisdom guide my hand in the bestowment of this subsequent boon. Your flesh has been made sacrosanct with the mark of the Dark Crusaders. Prove yourself worthy of this gift. Seek me in the bowels of the bridge. Our work is of the greatest import. All right, and with that, we are off to, I would assume, the tutorial. Uh, seems like our, uh, a Dark Crusader is kind of giving us a little bit of a test to see if we can actually make it to the Dark Crusader. So let's see if we can uh, live up to his expectations here. So we are finally loading into the world and stepping into the defiled sepulcher. Place laden with corpses and whatnot. Let's see, get a feel for the controls. Sprint feels good. Very quick roll. We got our light attack. Heavy attack that you can kind of charge or use quickly. So heavy attack there. Got our roll. And of course, roll's got to destroy stuff, which is probably going to lead to my demise at some point. Oh, this is already off to a great start. Already took a first hit, but that's all right. We are making our way through. Just to wake us up from our slumber. And if there's an item, you know I gotta pick it up. Let's see, we got an enervated vigor skull. So let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, let's do a quick overview of our gear. As a hallowed knight, we have a hallowed knight sword and shield, plus a throwing hand and which we can throw uh, three different types of throwables, but right now it looks like I'm only armed with a grenade, which honestly, pretty darn good to start off with. And then we have our Hallowed Knight set. Uh, but in addition to just the uh, starting weapons, I'm sure I'll, I'll find uh, more weapons along the course of my Let's Play. Uh, but Lords of the Fallen offers hundreds of uniquely brutal weapons and spells to kind of help you put up a fight against a deer's minion. So we're going to use whatever kind of advantage that we have at our disposal to make our way through the game. And right now, so far, I'm, I'm hurting. That's all right. I believe in myself. Uh, and right now, my character's 
kind of spec and the way I kind of typically p play a game like this is uh, I kind of put a lot of points into strength, endurance, and uh, dexterity pending whatever kind of weapon I have. I think for now a strength build kind of makes the most sense for me based on my starting gear which seems to prioritize strength as you can see there, strength C minus uh, and agility is an E. Uh, so I just want to make sure that I'm doing my best to, because I like this weapon, spec into strength a little bit more. But Thanks to the flexibility of something like this, you can kind of spec as you see fit and adjust your stat points as we will see later on. We've got our spell slingers over here. Some range combat. And just for the sake of my ease, I'm gonna heal using the Sanguinarix. The Sanguinarix is our quick heal. There are other methods of healing, but that is gonna be our consistent one that gets recharged when we take a rest at a vestige, which we will see later on. And I can explain that as we get closer. Alrighty. And so now let's go ahead and uh, get our throwing arm ready and knock this item down over here. And you might be wondering, what's that thing that's glowing and wispy that's just at your hip? That is an umbral lamp, and the umbral lamp is going to be our guide to show us uh, kind of the hidden world of the umbral, which is basically in plain sight. You just got to expose it using the lamp. So as you can see here, an umbral entity prevents your progress. Um, apart from that cue, one thing you'll want to pay attention to in the world of Lords of the Fallen is these moths. That lets you know that something is amiss and there's something just out of sight in the umbral realm. So using our lamp, we can see what's impeding our progress. And there we have it, a very scary eye flower thing. And so we'll need to deal with that in the umbral realm in order to make progress in Axiom, the realm of the living. So let's go ahead and trace these roots. And as you can see, it's kind of exposing a world that's hidden in plain sight. We got an enemy there, but keep an eye out for him. Branches extend out, the root extends out, and it looks like we need to head up there in order to deal with our scary eye flower. So let's go to make our way through. In addition to kind of showing you what lies in plain sight kind of thing, the uh, umbral lamp also allows you to kind of traverse areas you normally wouldn't be able to. So as you can see here, I can't make my way through this gate, but once again, our moths are cueing us to kind of investigate a little bit further with the umbral lamp. So in the umbral realm, this does not exist. So we can kind of walk our way through. And let's go ahead and deal with this dude. So in addition to our light and heavy attacks, we can also two hand weapons, which kind of shakes up your um, attack combo variety. So you can kind of mix and match as you see fit to really get a feel for how you want to attack enemies. Again, the game is very much open to adapting to how you want to play the game. So uh, figure out what works for you. Or just do what I do and put a bunch of points in a strict and hope that you can hurt enemies more and kill them before they can hurt you and kill you. Let's go ahead and make our way forward here. All right, let's take a look around just came from there so let's go ahead and proceed through here and so once again we see the moths here are kind of cueing us to investigate further this rickety bridge actually has stone hands but using the lamp to just kind of immerse to show the umbral world not enough so I'm gonna have to actually enter the realm of the dead the umbral realm so let's go ahead and transition over using our umbral lamp and one thing you'll notice is as I entered the umbral realm if you take a look in the upper left hand corner my health is now grayed out halfway through the grayed health is withered health meaning I can actually earn that grade portion back by attacking enemies so the game awards your kind of aggressive play but there is a risk reward mechanic in that where if I take a hit while I have withered health I will actually lose all of that great health, meaning the only way I'll be able to recharge it is if I use a Sanguinaric charge. So again, you want to be aggressive, but you also want to know how to pick your battles. So in addition to kind of showing me the Umbral Realm, I can use the Umbral Lamp to soul flay specific uh, parts of the environment to open up new paths. 
So we use our soul flay there to kind of open up a path and proceed forward. Additionally, we can use that soul flay to kind of uh, weaken enemies and make them a little more susceptible to damage. So let's try that on this one. So look at that, we ripped him out and now leaving him open to attack. There we go. And so this is our cue once again that we need to soul flay our way to clear a path. And as you'll notice, just underneath my health and the, uh, the uh, endurance bar, you'll see a kind of circle that is my soul charge. Uh, that's what I can, I need to refill that in order to uh, proceed further. So let's go ahead and try and recharge that with these Umbral Blisters, which hats off to whoever came up with the name Umbral Blister. That is a wonderfully disgusting name. Let's continue forward. In addition to getting it from enemies, you can also get like Vigor, which is the numbers that you see in the upper right hand corner, which you can use to upgrade your character or buy gear from vendors and whatnot. So hopefully I can get enough points so I can upgrade my character just a bit. I need some more strength. I want to kill things faster. Let's go ahead and Soul Flay, weaken homie over here. Ah, I missed. There we go. Gotta make sure I get all the vigor. And I can use a Soul Flay to grab myself an item. We got a Saintly Quintessence. Now the saintly quintessence won't come into play until later on in the game, but you can use that saintly quintessence to upgrade your sanguinarics. So not only can you use it to upgrade your sanguinarics to get more charges, so basically from three to four and so on, you can also use it to uh, upgrade the effectiveness of your sanguinarics, healing more and more. Proceed further. Let's see. Ah, look at this. This is the perfect opportunity for a plunging attack, an unsuspecting enemy. So let's go ahead and do this, and boom. You love a good plunging attack. One, keeps you safe. Two, looks really cool. All right, let's grab some more vigor from these umbral blisters. Yeah, so even just kind of playing around with the kind of attack patterns and whatnot, like the different attacks that you can use in different states of movement. Um, so like, obviously I have my heavy attack there that's kind of like a um, like piercing attack forward. But then if I'm sprinting when I do it, you can kind of have like a kind of jump pierce. And then if I two hand it, I have like an overhead jump swing. So there's a little bit of a variety. So you got to figure out what works for you. One thing you may have noticed as well is the longer you spend in the Umbral Realm, you might notice the blinking eyeball in the upper right hand corner. Basically, I am in the Umbral Realm, which I don't belong in, and the Umbral Realm is starting to take notice, so it's going to actually throw more any enemies at me to try and uh, kill me, keep me in that Umbral Realm, so to speak. So, uh, yeah, the longer you spend in the Umbral Realm, the more you open yourself up to enemies kind of uh, appearing before you or kind of emerging from these like that <laughs> emerging from these kind of cocoon slash eggs that you see in the umbral realm so uh, you got to kind of pick your battles accordingly and again it, it always goes back to that risk reward mechanic so look at that this enemy just appeared because I've been here too long but more enemies means more vigor and more vigor means more strength and Nick like hurting enemies with sword. All right, looks like we've made our way up to this kind of perch from previous. There we have the scary eye flower. And here's the thing that is standing in our way. So let's go ahead and soul flay this and make our way through. Thus clearing a path by venturing into the umbral realm so that we can progress in the axiom. 
One of the things I haven't really had to do yet, which I am going to have to put to the test in just a bit. Wait, I remember there was an enemy, so one second. Oh, uh, there are these emergence effigies that are scattered throughout the Umber Realm that you can use to actually return to Axiom. So we'll want to do that because Say I die in the realm of Axiom, after you die, you'll rise again in the Umbral world, which is the world of the dead. You'll have one final chance to return to your living state as all manners of hellish creatures descend on you. So again, even if you die in the Axiom world, you will have a second shot at kind of redeeming yourself, so to speak. So you can use that second life to kind of retreat, lick your wounds, or press forward and attack more enemies, and hopefully find either a resting point known as a vestige in this game, or these emergence effigies to kind of bring you back to the land of the living and kind of earn that second chance at life back. And of course, this guy sitting on the edge, you know what we gotta do. We gotta kick him. But he did not die, so of course that means we will go into a plunge attack and look at that coup de gras. It's beautiful. Let's go and open the door. So we have made our way through the defiled sepulcher and moving on to the abandoned red cops, or is it red copes? Real striking environment design though. Uh, but as I mentioned earlier, those rest points, these are known as vestiges, which you can see here, you can activate this. So now, even if I do die in the umbral world, and do actually like die die, I will return to the last vestige that I rested at. Uh, and as you'll notice, I have you know just a little sliver of health missing and I have two Sanguinarix charges. I can actually restore those by resting at a vestige, but by resting, I will of course heal myself and restore my Sanguinarix charges, but then I will also resurrect all of the enemies that I will have killed up to that point. So again, it always funnels back to the risk reward thing. Um, while here, I am also going to upgrade my character. And before I do that, I'm actually going to go through my inventory and spend this enervated vigor skull to get myself 200 more vigor. I will upgrade my character and put a point into strength because that's all I can afford right now. But we have strength, agility, endurance, vitality, radiance, and inferno. So uh, you'll want to spec accordingly based on whatever kind of build you want to play or build you discover you want to play. But now that we've done that, one thing I haven't had to do that I alluded to earlier is uh, block and parry. By blocking enemies, you will of course uh, reduce any damage you take by them, but you will sustain heavy wither damage, meaning you're going to have to attack and get aggressive in order to earn your maximum health back. However, you can also parry enemies, which when timed correctly, you'll deal um, some pretty serious posture damage, which we're gonna have to put into effect here. You can use parries, kicks, and heavy charge attacks to deal posture damage. And once you do enough posture damage, I will show you what happens if I can pull it off. So right, as you can see, I'm restoring my wither damage. He's going for the grab. Let's see if I can deal some posture damage. Get my withered health back. And there you go, going for the attack. And since we did enough posture damage, we broke his posture, and now we dealt a grievous strike for some serious damage. Which is kind of paramount if you want to succeed in Lords of the Fawn. Unfortunately, it is very scary to parry enemies, but it's just a fact of life that you're gonna have to contend with. But even if your parry timing's off, I mean, there's still multiple ways of dealing with enemies. So really just however you want to play the game. Me, I like to just get in the thick of action. And here we go, Grievous Strike for the win. Holy Bulwark Auto goes down. But following up on early story stuff that you didn't get a chance to see earlier, just for the sake of spoilers all around, my uh, so-to-be Dark Crusader has inherited this umbral lamp, and there is an entity that is searching for the umbral lamp, which we'll see here. This is known as the Light Reaper. And he's 
very scary. So, let's see if we can deal with the Light Reaper. Already off to a great start, I didn't even deal with the Light Reaper, it's just his mount. His winged mount that can teleport. And breathe fire, lovely. So not only can this thing fly, but it can also use portals to travel around. Alright. Let's see if we can dodge. Alright. Got a little bit of fire damage, and that attack did nothing to the mount. Woo. I'm gonna heal up. Alright, he's probably gonna do another lunge attack. Come on, come on. And dodge! Woo. Barely made it out. Oh! Ow. Okay, that was just basically an insta-kill, but see, I died in the Axiom, and now I have another chance in the Umbral. Hey, I dealt some da 12 damage? Jeez. Yeah, I did not stand a chance. But, as you probably guessed, that is a boss fight that I'm not supposed to win just yet. But who's this? Another thing that stands out to me about this game is kind of just like almost heavy metal like the art direction of this game is the the gothic dark fantasy i love high fantasy but when you add like that gothic dark fantasy twist to it my pristine knight and shining armor is now drenched in blood with rusted pauldrons like i can eat that up all day so let's go and return to where we were slain and as you'll notice i've lost all my vigor so once again, going back to that risk reward, uh, even though I died, I can recover my vigor. Sometimes it's dropped on the floor, but sometimes if you're killed by an enemy, the enemy will actually be holding your uh, leftover vigor. So you'll need to kill them in order to get your vigor back. So again, it just de decides if you, you, you gotta decide whether or not you want whatever you lost. Got a fork in the path. Let's go and check this out over here. Anything to investigate? Not quite. Oh, right here is a new type of uh, enemy slash mechanic that we have yet to run into. This enemy has like, you'll notice the blue health bar and this glowing blue object behind them. That is a parasite, an umbral parasite. We'll need to actually soul flay that parasite in order to deal with enemies that have that umbral parasite. It'll make your life a whole lot easier if you do that. Right here we have a sheer like cliff face. Looks like we'll need a venture into the umbral realm to proceed here, but for now let's go to investigate that other path in the fork. Let's see. Another sheer cliff face, but I got an item. Some flayed skin, tasty. All right, it looks like we have a doorway here, but because this drops off the edge of the cliff and I've learned what the bridge does previously, I don't think I'm going to step forward. I'm going to go back the other way. One of the things that kind of stands out to me about that previous boss encounter, the kind of boss fight that you have to lose against, it's like a nice form of uh, showing you how the game works because up to that point, you maybe would not have died. So it needs to sh the game needs to show you what it's like to die and how the kind of vestige rest points work, how kind of recovering your vigor works. And I appreciate how it kind of ties in the storytelling to that kind of game design mechanic. So. Hats off. But now it's time to pop a few umbral blisters. Apologies for my poor word choice. It looks like we have our first NPC I here. I always wondered if there were others. You're probably thinking that lamp's just a tool to be used as you see fit. Take it lightly, and you'll find it's the other way around. Mark my words. The Iron Wayfarer. What a I cool don't name. Know who you 
But since it seems a deer has you marked, making you a bigger threat to the realm. Looks like the Iron Wayfarer may be the one who was, uh, who kind of, uh, fought against, who kind of appeared in that cutscene with the Light Reaper. Because if you'll notice, uh, this is just me speculating, I have no idea. But he has like a skeleton arm, and that's kind of what we saw a glimpse of, along with his kind of like steel armor. So, this guy, it seems like he's been around a bit. If you know any kind of and one of my uh, things that I just cannot resist is lore. So whenever, whenever there's games that have, you know, kind of subtle cues to a greater history or uh, like background or lo like worlds or locations have a history, mysterious characters, I eat that up with a big spoon. I love that sort of thing. And one of the things that stands about out about Lords of the Fallen is that it feels like you are kind of immediately walking into a space with an established history for you to uncover. Things happen before you, things will happen after you, and you are just a piece in this history, which I really appreciate. It feels enriching in that respect. Uh, one of the other things that we have not encountered yet is you'll notice a set of blue moths here. This is our cue that in the Umbral Realm there is a stigma, and a stigma is a sort of cue to let us know that something traumatic and awful happened in the Axiom Realm, so we can actually venture into the Umbral in order to see uh, what happened in the past. So let's go ahead and take a look here. We can soul flay the stigma to kind of get a dramatic reenactment of what happened here. So it looks like there was an abandoned village full of village or a village full of villagers that were kind of overthrown and overrun by monsters and it looks like this sentinel guard kind of abandoned the village. So yeah, that's that's rough. But since I am in the Umbral Realm now, that's kind of my view that, yeah, there's probably baddies over here. I can see one of those uh, ranged spellcasters over there in the distance. Ooh, an item. Uh, I see somebody right over here. Ooh. I did enough posture damage to him in the back that I could do a grievous strike from the back, so that dealt with him pretty quickly. These kind of, the weaker enemies that appear because you're in the Umbral Realm are, again, very, like, soft and weak, but they have a tendency to kind of complicate battles when you're trying to navigate between enemies who are actually serious contenders, and they kind of are like pawns in that way. So you really got to manage uh, all the enemies and kind of uh, mitigate disaster by figuring out what you want to encounter first. And you know me. Look at that. You see, I see a cart. I see a barrel gotta roll into it. I cannot resist and it may lead to my downfall but I do not care. Like this. Well, you look at that I rolled into oh no okay well like I said a rolling into barrels and carts is going to lead to my doom but it was worth it. Let's just say I did it for dramatic effect. We'll go with that. Oh man, I got shoved. Alright, let's go check this out over here. Ooh, an item. A broken sword. Oh, would you look at that? Hit an enemy. There we go. Try to oh man, a spellcaster. All right, let's go ahead and deal with them. Uh, looks like we got another spellcaster in the distance and a lot of enemies on the floor. Oh, he got the attack off first. Oh, he almost pushed me off. All right, let's see if I can plunge attack a few of these people. All right, a twofer. I'm gonna heal up. Just because I'm getting a little scared, a little sweaty. Ah, man. I gotta be more mindful of my surroundings. 
not just my surroundings, my endurance. I'm, I'm eating through my endurance by going willy-nilly with swinging my sword. So uh, once you reduce your endurance all the way, you don't really have the opportunity to attack anymore. So you gotta be strategic with everything you do. Man, these guys keep spawning. I have been in the Umbral Realm for quite a bit of time. Umbral Blister. Pop. Ammunition pat pouch. A small mana stone cluster. Oh man, another? Oh wait, this one has a parasite, so yeah, they didn't really I didn't really deal any damage to them, so now that I've ripped out that parasite, now I can deal some damage to this enemy. Let's go ahead and knock down this item over here. See what we're missing. Pilgrim garb. So yeah, in addition to the like hundreds of weapons and spells that you have at your disposal, you can actually swap out with tons of gear. And me, uh, I love fashion and stuff like this. So yeah, I will always prioritize looks, form. I will always prioritize form over function, but for now, Honestly, I think my Hallowed Knight armor looks way cooler. I will do that. Oh! The game caught me monologue. But hopefully we can keep an eye out for some cool looking armor to supplement our very badass looking Hallowed Knight. Ooh, what's over here? Uh-oh. Scary guy. Uh, let me see, can I? All right, I weakened him a little bit by soul flaying him. Oh, he's got ranged attacks too? Yeah, I don't, maybe I shouldn't have gotten into a fight with this enemy. Just gotta take it slow. Yeah, he's, he's tough. Got to parry accordingly. He's very scary. <laughs> Honestly, it's just the Claymore. He's withering my health big time. Yeah, oh, great. He can cat throw his sword on fire. Oh, no, he's going to do, a, is this a ranged attack? All right. Oh, yep, there's his range attack. All right, let's see if I can get the jump on him. All right, I'm gonna go in. Oh, great, we got another spellcaster over here. All right, things are not looking good. Uh, these Brio Stone Pairs, you can actually heal over time with. So I'm gonna use one of those. Not quite as effective as a Sanguinarix, but hey, I'll take any advantage I can get right now. That spellcaster in the distance is really making my life miserable. Let's see if we can. All right. These guys keep spawning. Oh no. All right. Oh man. <laughs> this guy has quite the uh, combo. Come on. I'm just trying to do enough posture damage so I can Grievous Strike him. Come on, here we go. There we go. And he goes down. Well, that was very scary. Oh, I see. I got tons of vigor, but I have I no longer have any sanguinarix charges, so things are not looking good. Wait, what is this? What is that? Okay, I think I've definitely been in the umbral realm too long. This is not good. I've never seen anything like this before. Uh, 
I'm gonna imbue my weapon with holy to see if that helps in any way, shape, or form. Oh yeah, I'm not doing any damage to this dude. Uh, this is not good. I'm going to... I'm just gonna try and proceed forward. This is not great. Oh! An emergence effigy! Yeah, my eye, my umbral, I, I, I caught just a glimpse of it before I came back to the Axiom world. The umbral eye that was in the upper right corner was red, so that's probably your cue that you should probably head back to Axiom as soon as you get the chance. Because, yeah, I was doing nothing to that enemy. That was, that was horrific. Oh, man, that was awesome, though. All right, let's see what's over here. Good to know. Ooh, hey, there's an item here. I don't want to go back into the umbral world right now. I'm scared. Got an item here. Oh, Got to get the item. Ooh, an or Orion Preacher shield. Let's see. The shield 46. Uh, let's see. Eh, it's a little bit weaker. I think I'm going to stick with my Hallowed Knight shield for now. Oh, wait, what? I got a, another weapon. A wooden cross? My wooden cross is actually stronger than my Hallowed Knight sword. So, yeah, I think I'm going to opt for the uh, wooden cross. It does look like it scales a little bit worse than my Hallowed Knight sword, but for now, I think I'm all right. So, this one, this wooden cross is more like an axe. Let's go ahead and investigate this area over here. Use the umbral lamp to find a pathway. I would really like to heal, but I also don't want to rest at a vestige just yet because then I'm going to have to deal with all of the enemies I killed. So there's a couple enemies here. Let's go for this spellcaster first. Oh yeah, this wooden cross is great. Okay, so far so good. Got an enervated vigor skull. A couple of them. Raw mangler axe. Now that sounds awesome. Let's see. Ooh, I can't use it just yet. I need to raise my infernal skill or my infernal stat, but looks like this one has fire damage added to it. And of course, I can use this weapon. It's just not going to be as effective without the proper stats. So I think for now, I'm going to swap back to my wooden axe. Now let's proceed down the path. Now I have to be extra cautious. One thing this game has also taught me is there's always enemies hiding behind these kind of like makeshift destructible walls, which I can catch a glimpse of right here. So let's go ahead and surprise them. Nope, did not attack them. I did surprise them. I just didn't deal any damage. I think there's another enemy here. And here's another enemy. So once again, if you kind of like heavy strike an enemy who's not paying attention to you, you have the potential to open them up for a grievous strike. Boom. Ooh, an item. An unripe berry. What does that do? An unripe berry, a clipping of unripe berries which increases stamina regen well let's do that i am going to remove the enervated skull because i don't really use those until i actually need to upgrade my character uh, let's go ahead and add those unripe berries in here i'm going to remove the minor wither salts i don't want to do wither damage just yet i'm going to put my i'll just leave an open spot for now with caution oh great there's a vestige here so let's go ahead and activate this vestige 
Now that I've done that, I am going to real quick use those enervated skull, vigor skulls that I've found. Give myself as much vigor as possible. And now I'm going to upgrade my character. So I'm going to put some points into strength. Again, I, I just want to see the numbers go up. So I'm going to put two points into strength because that's all I can afford right now. And I will rest because I definitely need it. So if we take a look over here. We have a gateway. Gate does not budge. No cues for the Umbral Realm, so we can probably proceed as is. Make our way up here. I see a spellcaster in the distance. Alright, I'm gonna go for him. Wow, he still got that attack off on me. Oh, great! We got ambushed by an axe guy. Oh man, my, endur my, my endurance, my stamina's gone. Whew! Here we go, here we go. Lovely. A pointed stick. So right now the bridge is out, but it looks like if I can make my way to the other side of this bridge, it looks like I should be able to create a shortcut. Ooh, we got an item here. What's this? What do we got? Mine owner's ring. Well, let's uh, take a look at what that does. Mine Owner's Ring, an old tarnished ring. Increased maximum strength and stamina regeneration rate. One of the several identical rings worn by the small group of wealthy nobles and business people who co-owned the Sunless Sky Mine, a venture they operated both heedlessly and ruthlessly. Look at that. I love a little bit of a lore drop with my accessories and items. Yeah, I definitely want increased stamina. I'm gonna heal up a bit and investigate further. We have ourselves a body of water here and the moths are my cue. I'll need to venture into the umbral. Looks like we got a lot of these cocoons here. So let's try and deal with these as soon as possible. Hopefully our red Phantom looking friend will not show up. Oh man, there's a lot of these cocoons here. Let's destroy these as quickly as possible. Oh, too late. They're already hatching. This is like the perfect choke point for these enemies. Oh no. It's such a narrow path. And yeah, by themselves, they're no danger, but together in these tight spaces, they make it hard to navigate, so you can kind of fall into a trap. Clear path. Some more vigor, love to see it. Ooh, an item. Throw. Ooh, and an umbral blister. Anything for the vigor. Let's see what do we got? A pilgrim hood and pilgrim bandages. Let's take a look at those. Let's see. Pilgrim band. It is. Oh, it, it actually increases my uh, damage mitigation to holy and and resistance to smite and bleed. Let me just take a look. Okay, okay. I think I like the look of my hallowed knight gauntlets better but let's take a look at my hallowed knight helm so same thing here it looks like it does damage mitigation to holy but it does make me look like an absolute badass and as i said i'm a form over function kind of guy and i look pretty darn cool so let's opt for this look for now if i'm gonna venture into the umbral realm i might as well look good doing it Oh, great. Next, dude. Come on. Got my attack off first this time. And we have an emergence FSG here. We got another axe 
wielding enemy in the distance, but let's go ahead and open up this shortcut here. And lo and behold, we have a way back. You gotta love a dedicated jump button. Oh, of course, enemy behind the destructible environment. All right, where'd that axe person go? All right, here we go. Oh, just barely missed. Oh, I can Grievous Strike. Ah, I missed the Grievous Strike opportunity. There we go. All right, we venture forward. Some Holy Ward. Ah, it's our old friend, the Iron Wayfarer. You carry the lamp long enough, and you'll see history repeat over and over. If you don't want to keep retreading the same ground yourself, should you fall, make use of this. Vestige Seed. So the Vestige Seed is what you can kind of use to, uh, over the course of the game, you'll find these umbral flower beds. And with these umbral flower beds, you can plant that Vestige Seed. And that's basically like a, uh, almost like a portable uh, vestige point. The problem is, is this is a consumable item. So you need to be strategic about where you use these vestige seeds. Maybe you didn't really have a, a trouble with the particular area and you come across an umbral flower bed. Maybe it's worth saving your vestige seed and use it at a later, more difficult looking area or uh, uh, something that's further away from your last vestige point. But for now, let's go ahead and try out the vestige seed here. And now, we can interact with this, but let's see what our Iron Wayfarer has to say first. I've given you more umbral guidance than I ever had. From now on, find your own way and stay out of mine. All right, point taken. Let's go ahead and use our Enervated Vigor Skull. And uh, one thing that I think it's very clever is uh, the Iron Wayfarer alluded to when you have the lamp, you are do kind of forced and doomed to see history repeat itself over and over. And I like, I'd like to liken that to the kind of reasoning, in-game reasoning for why you, when you die, you kind of respawn back at a vestige point. So you are kind of forever cursed to do the same thing over and over again. So I, I kind of like that in-game reasoning. That's really, really clever. All right, my sang. Oh, I didn't actually rest at the vestige seed. So let's go ahead and do that so I can restore my sanguinaric charges. I took a look real quick because I only had uh, two charges. All righty. This area just looks incredible. Look at that view. Let's go move forward. Ooh, an item. Oh, I'm taking burn damage. Probably shouldn't start stand in the fire, but I gotta do it for the item. Let's go ahead and add that to my satchel. Fire salts. So now I can imbue my weapon with holy or fire. But we have stumbled onto a cutscene. You know what that means. By your radiance, grant me the strength to continue to endure these dark days. To lay bare the path to salvation for my wayward brothers and sisters. So we may walk Getting together strong boss and vibes. To strike down all those who would see our will defied. Oh my Even gosh, I look like such a badass. I honored my pledge of patience to the exactor. And yet you now appear before me, a stranger. I love that. Bearing what was She kind of looks like a like a corrupted kind of paladin. It looks like she's us using and like a holy I blade. And I love like the way the blood has kind of corrupted this kind of pure paladin look. Yeah. Pita, she of blessed renewal. That that owns. 
All right, let's go ahead and try and parry our way. Ooh, she got a strike in. I'm gonna heal up. Just gotta calmly parry. Not get too greedy with my attacks. There we go. Posture damage, and we got a Grievous Strike in. Let's see if I can get a couple shots in. There we go. There we go. Ah, man, missed the attack. There we go. Get my Withered Health back. I would, oh, there we go. I would love the opportunity to use the fire salt. Just gotta find a lull in the action for a second. There we go. All right, maybe this is my chance. So now my, I've imbued my weapon with some flame. I'm gonna get my Sanguinarics ready to go. I wonder if I can throw something at it. Missed. Hey, that one worked. There we go. Kind of keep at it. Get some fire damage in. What you doing? What you doing? Ooh. Okay. Okay. She can grab. She can summon copies of herself. Alrighty. There we go. Get a parry in. Restore some withered health. Take it slow. Take it nice and slow. What are you doing? What are you doing now? Okay. I am going to stay in the middle. All right, posture damage. We got a grievous strike in. All right, here we go. Here we go. Just going for the grab. What's what's happening? What's this? Oh! Not expecting that. All right, let's heal up. Take it slow. I think I'm missing my parries. I think this is a great chance. Wait, let me just get in the proper lane. I'm gonna get in the far lane here. Let me get some fire on my weapon. Ah, man. I'm missing all these parries. Messing up. All right, here we go. Calm down. Right, what are you doing? What are you doing this time? Going for the grab. All righty, where are we going? Where are we going? I'm gonna stay this inside lane over here. I'm missing these parries. Oh, I beat her! Yes! I have a tendency to not pay attention to the health. Every time I pay attention to health, I die. <laughs> Whew! Pita goes down. Dude, that looks so cool. I really like this kind of like different frame rate like effect that's going on here. It makes it look like otherworldly and ethereal. Maybe this is like the corruption or something. I, I don't know. That looks awesome. looks so cool all right and our reward is a ton of vigor heresy purge that rocks uh, we got a ton of vigor and it looks like we got another vestige seed which we can throw over here 
think that seems like a pretty good spot to end this. But for now, let me go ahead and just plant this vestige seed here. Want to see the benefits of my boss fight. So I am going to upgrade my character one last time. Put a bunch of points into strength. And give my Dark Crusader a little bit of rest. Alright, I think that's the perfect place to stop. But I can't wait to keep delving deeper into Axiom in Lords of the Fallen, available October 13th on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series consoles, and PC. I'm Nick Lamone, and for all things Lords of the Fallen, keep it locked to IGN.